I think it's helpful to, uh, for you to be able to see what is here. And for those of you, if you're recording this, record the screen more than me. Um, authority for uh, multiple round voting or preferential voting is found in the State Party Constitution, Article 12, uh, Section 1, Paragraph B. So if you have two, or, uh, I'm sorry, three or more candidates running in a race, <coughs> the caucus may decide to use either multiple ballots or preferential voting. That's up to the caucus, and you can mix and match. So if you have your uh, secretary treasurer race, if there's only uh, two candidates or three candidates, you could have maybe multiple round in that case. If, you, if you're filling three county delegate seats, then perhaps you'll want to use preferential voting because um, as it, it was the case last time around that people who had to fill multiple seats, for example, they were just voting the same way every single time. And one of the great things that are advantages of preferential voting is that the voter can express his will one time on the paper ballot, and that ballot is used repeated, repeated, repeatedly in the county process. So here's the similarities and the differences between the two ballots. Uh, obviously, multiple round ballot, you mark one and only one candidate. The preference there is for Danny. On a preferential ballot, not only can you vote for Danny as your number one choice, but you also get to choose a secondary choice, Ed, in this case, a tertiary choice, Beth, in this case, a fourth choice, and a fifth choice. And so here, on a preferential ballot then, if Danny is the candidate who gets eliminated because Danny receives the fewest number of votes, then you go to the next highest preference on the ballot, which is, in this case, number two, Ed. And then, as if that voter had already cast his second round ballot for Ed. That's the, the, one, of the, one of the great things about multiple round voting. I mean, knowing multiple round voting is the key to understanding preferential voting. Because preferential voting is nothing more than multiple round voting on the same piece of paper. So to illustrate the similarities, I'm going to illustrate um, this multiple round voting. Here's a voter in a caucus. He chooses one and only one candidate on his ballot. There is more than one person in the caucus, and all of them cast their ballots into a ballot box. Those, uh, the, the counters then uh, count the ballots and create a stack of ballots for each candidate. One stack for each candidate. And so they just, you know, if it says Al on the ballot, it goes to the pile for Al. If it says Beth on the ballot, it goes to the pile for Beth, and so on, until you, been, uh, until you have separated all the ballots into their separate piles. This is, this is you all know this, this is multiple round voting. Um, and some of you have not counted for a multiple round election, that's why we're, we're walking through this, though. And so, then you, you get the sum of the votes. In this case, 7 plus 8 plus 5 plus 10 is 30. And so you have 30 votes cast. A winner has to receive a majority of those votes. Majority of 30 is 16. You look at the tally and you see no candidate has received 16 votes. And so we're going to eliminate the candidate who received the fewest number of votes. In this case, it's Chuck. And then those three remaining candidates are on the second round ballot as you return to the voters and ask them to cast a second round ballot. Here in writing are the, are, is the procedure just illustrated in pictures. Voting is done, as described, one candidate. Counting is done by sorting the ballots, separate stack for each candidate. You count the ballots in each stack, you tally the sum, get the majority, and then ask the question, does any candidate re have a majority of the votes cast? If so, he's the winner, and you're done with that election. If not, the candidate with the fewest number of votes is eliminated, and you go to the next, and, and then you go to another round of balloting. And in large caucuses, as Eric mentioned earlier, this was one of the reasons why it took so long to conduct elections, because they would go do another round of balloting over and over, and, and that took a lot of time. In the preferential voting, notice the, 
the, the similarities and the differences between the two methods or the two procedures. I have highlighted in blue the differences. I'm going to just pop back and forth between these two slides for a second to give you a, a clear idea of what is different. So in the case of a preferential ballot, the voters mark any number of candidates in order of their preference. That's what's different for the voters. What's different for the counters is that they will sort the ballots into a stack for each candidate according to the highest ballot preference for the candidate still in the race. Other than, oh, and then on, on step number four, uh, instead of going, oops, yeah, instead of going back to the voters for another round of balloting, the counters simply use the ballots already cast distribute those ballots among the remaining candidates and that's how they uh, and that's how they they, uh, they actually conduct the multiple rounds of counting rather than the multiple rounds of balloting but it's the very same process okay now let's look at the illustration of preferential balloting in pictures you have the voter express his preferences among the five candidates the way he wants all the participants in the caucus do the same. You don't have to vote for all five. You don't have to express a preference for any of them. You can express a preference for as many as you wish. And then they cast the ballots. They go into the stacks. They're counted. You decide that Chuck gets eliminated. But instead of going back to the voters for another round of balloting, the counters simply count again. The ballots already cast, as described, OK? Now, there's two other things I want to mention, and we'll be done. Uh, what is a majority of votes? Very interesting question, because often we don't get this exactly right. Those are the four choices. Uh, how many think it's choice one? Majority means half. Choice two, more than half. Choice three, 50% plus one. Choice four, integer greater than half. Okay, let's take a look at each one of those. You're all correct. Half is incorrect. <laughs> half is not a majority. More than half is correct, but it's also imprecise. How much more than half? Is it two-thirds? Is it three-fourths? Well, we don't quite know when we just say more than half. 50% plus one is correct half the time, or, half, or sometimes correct. For example, if you have 11 votes cast, Half of 11 is 5.5. 5.5 plus 1 is 6.5. And if you have a candidate who gets 6 votes, he does not attain 6.5 majority. But he, yet, yeah, he is the winner. So, turns out that integer greater than half is always correct. So, half of 11 is 5.5. You take the integer greater than half, which is 6, and 6 is your majority. In the case of an even number of votes, there's the rule. You take half, add one, there's your majority. So a majority of 10 is 6. In the case of an odd number of votes, you take half of the, the sum, add a half, and you come up with 6. 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. You add a half to get 6, and 6 is your majority. So just uh, helpful to know that. As, uh, because you don't want to paint yourself into a corner and have nobody get a majority. Final slide, um, and we'll take some questions, if any, um, is we're just going to walk through the tallying of, 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 uh, of, a, of, a, of a round of election. This could be either multiple round or preferential voting, it doesn't matter, but I'm just introducing the idea that it's important to have a tally sheet, and if you will arm your volunteers and your caucuses with a tally sheet like this. And I have copies here that, um, and I have electronic copies that, that uh, I'll make available uh, for everybody. But they're very helpful because they help determine this majority number. That number can change. In this case, all of these uh, votes sum to 110. I tried to use some good round numbers so it's easy to, 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 to conceptualize here. The majority of 110 is 
55 plus 1, meaning 56. So, in this case, we have to eliminate a candidate because nobody got 56 votes. Which of those two candidates do you want to eliminate? Question. Is it the majority of votes or the majority of voters? M majority of votes. Now, in this, so in this situation, everybody voted for one person each? In this or case, the 110 votes cast. Right? 110 votes cast, yes. And, and, and so, uh, nobody got 56, and we have to eliminate the, the, the candidate with the lowest number of votes, please. This, this count is everybody's first preference. Right. So everybody that filled out their preferential ballot, that count just comes from their first preference. So right. And if it was a multiple round voting, it would just be the only preference on those 110 ballots. In a case of a multiple, uh, I'm sorry, in a, in a preferential ballot, just like Eric said, it was the first preference uh, uh, on the ballot that was counted for that person. So. Again, remember, on that preferential ballot, you express your first choice, your second choice, your third choice, and the counters, in this case, looked at the first choice for Al, and, and, and put those ballots in a stack for Al. They looked and saw the ballots whose first choice was Beth, and they put those in a stack for Beth, and so forth, and came up with the 110 votes cast. 56 is the majority, so now we know we need to go to the second round. Okay, in this case, Chuck and Ed both have the same number of votes. What do you do? Flip a coin. That's right, you flip a coin. And it's usually good practice to, to, to agree beforehand, okay, it's between these two gentlemen, uh, which of you would like to uh, call it? And they agree between them who, who calls it, and then you generally call it in the air so that there's no <laughs> um, accusation of, well, he flipped it just so it turns up tails on purpose. Okay, so you call it in the air, turns up heads or tails, and, and whatever you, uh, you chose uh, is the winner, right? If you choose heads and you chose tails, and it comes up heads, you're the winner, right? But you agree to that beforehand and you flip the coin. Okay, in this case, we, um, Ed lost the coin toss, and so we take, you know, for the second round, uh, the, the votes that were cast for Chuck, and Chuck, I'm sorry, for Ed, and Ed's the ballots cast for ads then would be used and distributed among the four remaining candidates. Please. Just for me, quit saying second round and say second preference. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Second preference. So uh, all of the the 17 ballots cast for Ed, the first preference was Ed. Those 17 ballots, you look and see, okay, second preference is for either Al, Beth, Chuck, or Danny. And those ballots, those 17 ballots, are distributed among Al, Beth, Chuck, and Danny according to the second preference. Thank you. Okay, and uh, now those votes were, are, are uh, tallied. It turns out that there were five voters in this scenario who only expressed one preference. It was their first choice, and they, and they quit. They didn't express any additional choices, so there is no second choice on those uh, on those ballots, and so only 105 votes were cast. What's the majority? 53. Excellent. But, but in this case, Ed could have theoretically had 83 second place votes. Theoretically, yes. So you'd have all zeros, and then what do you do? It's exactly like multiple round voting, though. He, he could have had he could have been the second choice for 83 people, but he lost in the first round. It's exactly the same. Okay, so we decide that uh, Chuck has the fewest number of votes, he's out, and then you sort his ballots using the second choice, displayed among the, uh, the three main candidates, come up with 100, how many, what's the majority of 100? Excellent. Nobody got 51? So, the candidate with the fewest number of votes is eliminated. His ballots, or the ballots in his stack, are distributed among Beth and Danny, according to the next highest preference. And look, we have uh, 53 plus 44, which is 97. What's the majority? 
It's one of those, 48 or 49. That's <laughs> 48. That's right. Half of 97 is 47 and a half. Add a half to get 48. And yes, we have one candidate who has a majority, and that's Beth. She wins the election. Now, one important point. If you are filling two seats, for example, the counters would use all the very same ballots that they collected, and they would treat Beth as having been eliminated. Right? She already won the seat. She won the first state delegate seat. Now we're filling the second state delegate seat using the very same ballots that were cast in the first uh, election. And so you treat Beth as having been eliminated, and you distribute all the ballots, all 110 ballots, among the four remaining candidates, Al, Chuck, Danny, and Ed, and you follow the procedure to its conclusion, okay? So, please. So in that example, all of them, everyone who had chosen Beth as first, would then just go to their second part. Correct, that's correct. Did you all hear that question? Yeah, for the okay, let's make sure. The question was, uh, how do you, how, how are, how are Beth's votes distributed among the remaining four? Obviously, all of the votes uh, cast for Beth as the first preference will hopefully will have a second preference, and you use the second preference on those ballots to distribute them among Al, Chuck, Danny, and Ed. Good question. Turns out that I have some practice ballots here, and we're actually going to get some practice today, I understand, from your chair, and, you, and I will be here after the meeting for as long as you want to be here and practice. I have um, a set of ballots, and there are five uh, possible outcomes depending on the coin tosses, and, I, and so you can walk through this yourself, make sure you understand how it's done, how preferential voting is conducted, so that you have the knowledge that your confidence will make it or break it in a caucus. If you're confident you can do this, it works great and you'll save hours of time. That's, uh, under comparing the two methods, notice that, that uh, multiple round voting is easier for voters and counters because there's only one check mark on the ballot. No question it's easier, but the disadvantage is that it takes more time. Uh, some caucuses got out after midnight because of, of this multiple rounds of voting over and over. IRV is a little more difficult for voters because they have to think to themselves, okay, Beth is my first choice. Now, if Beth is eliminated, who is my second choice? Okay, that's Ed. If Ed is eliminated, who is my third choice? I mark that. If Danny, my third choice, is eliminated, who do I want? Okay, Al. So it's a little more difficult for the voter, but if he does that thinking beforehand, completes his ballot, then this ballot is good, just like a multiple round of voting is done. Yeah, but it takes less time, okay? IRV takes a lot less time. Any other questions? Go back to that previous slide where you've got the table up there. Okay. So when it gets cut out in that second, that second round, how do his votes go? All of the votes for him at that point are, no, are no, 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 no. The people who voted Ed number one also expressed a second preference. And so the counters, the vote counters, you would look at the second preference for the stack of ballots, and you would distribute those 17 ballots into the other four candidates' piles according to the second preference. Question. When you under the third round, do you look at the second preference or the third preference? You look at the second preference if that candidate is still in the race. You look at the third preference if the second preference is out. You look, at the, you look at the highest preference right. for a candidate that's still in the race. Yes. You look at the highest preference uh, for a candidate still in the race. Please. So in the third round, then, Ed's third place preference. We're added to the three that we're right? That's right. When you get to the third and fourth rounds, you're going to be distributing ballots which were in the original pile, which has a first choice. 
and a second, and a third, and a fourth. So by the time you get to the third or fourth round, there will be two or three candidates eliminated already. And so that's why you, 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 you distribute them according to the highest preference uh, for candidates still in the race. So in that example, in the first vote, well, the second round, the Ed voters, the Ed ballots, they use the second preference. Correct. In the third round, it was the Ed, the third preference on the Ed ballot, and the second preference from the Chuck ballot. Exactly. Exactly. Please. Is it acceptable to mark these ballots since Ed's out, I can cross Ed's name off number one and I see number two, so then I have to go to number three that I already see, or should we not do that? In a single seat election, that's fine. In a multiple seat election, you may want to be, you, you, you still want to see, you know, what's on the ballot. So if you cross it out, it makes it less legible. So be careful with that. Please. It may be been said before, but if Al and Beth, the, the ones that are still in the race, they don't get recounted until they are eliminated. Is that correct? So the piles don't change. We just add the ones that are eliminated to it. Um, I, I think that's correct. She's asking, do you recount the whole pile for Al and Beth and Danny? Uh, the ones who are not eliminated, do you recount the whole pile? Um, I don't. So you just leave those piles alone? Because I, I arrange my piles uh, so that all the first round... Um, be easier to show right here, I guess. So, so here's my... My first rounds for this guy, my first round for this guy, and so forth. And then any that come, see Ed's, they disappear. And so then if, if the second round for, I mean the second preference on this ballot is for Danny, I will put him here. And then here. And then here. That way I don't have to recount those ballots. Just to clarify something. So yeah. if you're multiple seats, you follow this process just as it is. But then everybody that voted for Beth, who won the, the first seat, you start it all, all over again. All over and again. Everybody that had voted for Beth, you're using their second preference in the first round, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, good clarification. Good. He's a sharp. <laughs> sharp cookie. Okay, I'll be here, like I say, afterwards. And, and uh, practice is good. Thank you very much.